people have the fate of the free. Yeah, I know, that's the job, that's the zone's job now. So we need to make sure that Canelo and Golden Boy and the zone make the fans aware that the fight is free. Like, oh, I don't want they don't want to pay for it, but then they... Well, you know, at the end of the day, you were going to have to pay $80 for that fight. You probably would have done 400,000 buys, right? Now, you've got a fight you can watch for free. It's not a lot to ask. We just need to make sure that Canelo's fans are aware of how to watch. And that's the job of the Zones marketing team. Canelo, Golden Boy, us. To make sure it's a great deal for fight fans. Are there any other big promotion teams that you're looking to bring to the Zone? Uh, not really. I mean, we have no problem working with other promoters. As we've done with so many fighters already. And if we bring Gennady Golovkin to the Zone, his promotional company will be involved as well. Because just like Canelo, they're not just going to give you the, the, the asset without something, yeah. you know, like a... So, if you get Triple G, will we see another a third Canelo? I believe so. No, I think everybody wants that third fight. I think Canelo wants it. I think Triple G wants it. The Zone certainly want it. And that's definitely a plan for 2019. Okay. Do you think that... Any update on potentially signing Mikey Garcia? No, I mean, he's probably there. I mean, uh, I think that the problem that you've got at the moment, I mean, when you look at Showtime, do Showtime have anything scheduled right now other than pay-per-views? You know, the answer is no. They're talking about Fury Wilder, then they're talking about Broner Garcia. Oh, sorry, Broner uh, Pancharlo. And then they're talking about, oh, that's on Fox. Charlo's on Fox. Okay. Okay. So they have three planned pay-per-views with no free boxing. So if you're subscribing to Showtime, all you've got to do, you've got to pay 80 pound a month to watch free fights. And pay-per-views. Yeah. So, you know, I think what people are being told right now who are interested in comfort zone is, don't worry, you can box on pay-per-view on Showtime. And over time, they'll realise that's not going to happen. And if it does, the numbers are going to flatline and bottom out. So do you think uh, pay-per-view is dead? For many, 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 many fighters, yeah. I think that unless you're Floyd Mayweather, unless you're Conor McGregor, unless you're Canelo, who is no longer on pay-per-view, then I think pay-per-view is dead unless the price point changes. $84.99. I mean, our, our pay-per-views are $25 with Joshua. $85, eh? Especially if you've got one in December, January and February. At what point is the fight fan going to turn around and go, oh, it's enough, it's enough. You don't mind a little one-off. You know, you get your friends around, you have your pizzas, you have your Takatis. But every month, you know, because you're going to get to a level where fans are going to say, I don't know, uh, Garcia against Spence. Great fight. No, no, we're not paying $90 for that fight. Pacquiao Brona. No. You know, Wilder Fury. You know, they're not Canelo Golovkin. They're not Mayweather Pacquiao. They're I mean, not. Granted, I don't think that Triple G needs Canelo at this point in his career to well, push the fight. Well, he needs him to create that kind of payday. Yeah. Like, the only fight where Triple G can earn tens of millions is against Canelo, right? He's got enough money, so he don't need, you're right, he don't need him, but he wants to be in the biggest fights. And I'm sure he'd love to try and get what, what is on paper, revenge. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the fight. I think that's the, if, if Canelo beats Fielding, I think that's the favourite fight for me. Jacobs Canelo, I think it's a brilliant fight, but he's got a win tonight, so it's going to be very tough. So before Canelo Triple G2 was announced, there were rumors that Jacob and yes. Canelo was going to happen. Yeah, it's very close. Can you elaborate on the it's very close. There? I mean, you know, obviously there was a lot of beef between Triple G and uh, Canelo. It didn't look like that fight was going to happen. Eric Gomez come on and said, you know, we talked numbers. You know, we had counter offers, another counter offers. We were close. Yeah. But then unfortunately, he phoned me up and said, we've, we've reached a deal. I was like, okay. So, you know, Danny gets a chance to become world champion tonight. I think if he wins, I really think he's one of the favourites for uh, Canelo in May. Given the fact that Canelo now fights on the zone, do you think the fight would be a lot easier to pick up negotiations yeah, if yeah, Jacobs sure. wins the fight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think the zone look at our guys, Andrade, Jacobs, and they're natural guys. Yeah. Well, it's very easy. You know, it would be a deal that would be very easy to do. And I, th I know that the zone would love Canelo against Jacobs, obviously so would we. But he has to win tonight, so fingers crossed and, and hopefully he becomes champion. Do you think the UFC platform, the way they kind of compete against each other in the exact way you explained, like you know, having three pay-per-views 
I mean, every couple, every couple, every couple of weeks, it makes people like kick. You think that hurts them in the long run? Whereas uh, with the zone, you pay per month, so whatever you give us, we watch. The, the, the issue is, is that in the UK, we don't have the rights fees from broadcasters to be able to put on Joshua against someone. So we have to go pay per view. And there's never been a broadcaster that is willing to pay the pay per view revenues as a license fee. Now there is, and they're called the zone. So when with this deal they've been able to go to Canelo and say, look, all this money you're making on pay per view, we will guarantee you as a rights fee. It's never been done before. So sometimes promoters and fighters have had no choice but to spin it on pay per view and to try. But the problem is, what happens when you're supposed to do a pay per view? Fury Josh a Fury Wilder, for example. How many pay-per-views? I don't know. Could be as little as 200. Could be 400. I, I don't know. But if you're spun a line, it's going to do a million buys. And they haven't even sold 10,000 tickets yet in apparently the biggest fight of the year. What happens if it does 200,000? And you've been told it's going to do a million. And you're on the upside of the pay-per-view. And you're supposed to make 15 million. And you can walk away with four. You're in the red. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the worry. So I think people like Canelo and Golden Boy are smart in the sense that they've looked at this game guarantee and said, do you know what, like, let's take it, because we don't know what's going to happen with paper view. But at the moment, Canelo Golovkin is doing 1.2, what happens if in a year's time it does 800,000? No, they've covered themselves, they've got guaranteed money, and that goes a long way. Surprised that Canelo Triple G2 did 1.2 million, I think exceeding the numbers for the first fight? I thought it was doing more. Really? And I thought, if they would have got each other in front of me, how can you do a fight with that much animosity and that much controversy and not get them together. The first thing you do is get them around the table talking about the drugs, talking about the draw, talking about this. I mean, that's going to sell because we've never seen that from Gennady before, but we know it's there in this instant. In terms of rematches being bigger than the first fight, I can't recall one since Tyson Holy Field 2. Rematch is a bigger event than the first fight. Well, I think that um, it, it, wasn't mu it wasn't much bigger, but it should have been much, much bigger. And the third fight will be bigger than the second fight because it was a brilliant fight and it was a close fight and there's, there's still controversy but you've got to bring them together do you, do you think the second fight should have been a draw? Uh, do you know what? Like shockingly I haven't watched it in its entirety okay so uh, but I've, I've sort of gathered everybody's feedback and there's a lot of swayed opinions like there's a lot of people in boxing that feel like Canelo won the fight, yeah. but it seems like on mass people felt Golovkin won the fight. Uh, I think Canelo really won because he did what the, the media wanted him to do. Yeah. Can, um, Triple G supposed to have knockout power. Yeah. Well, he and backed you know, him up. Yeah. And, you, know, you saw his face after the fight. Yeah. Golovkin, he'd been in a war. You know? mm -hmm. What did you think about uh, Leonard Ellerby's rebuttal about the whole Travante Davis thing? It's disappointing because when you got a kid out there on social media moaning and saying, I can't get fights, a talent like Javante Davis Davis should be boxing four times a year, right? So he's boxed once a year, and I made him an offer for, I don't know, two or three times as much money as he's making, and keep him active, but it probably doesn't suit, it suits Javonto, it probably doesn't suit Mayweather promotions. So it's a disappointing, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna approach Javonto Davis. I approach Mayweather to work together on Javonto Davis. And like the Charlo brothers, uh, they said send another offer something I mean, I just made them an offer, which is three times what they're making at the moment. And I, I just feel Think they're, they're so easily talked. How do you know when you're overpaying? Oh, we're already overpaying. They're overpaid on their current purse, let alone my offer. So, but they like, there's some very good people on that side who convince people of doing certain things that actually makes no sense at all. So, Charlo's like, yeah, send me a real offer. It's like, well, hang on a minute. You've just got an offer, probably, definitely two times, maybe three times what you're making. And you're saying it's a poor offer, yet you're boxing for half at the moment against Willie Monroe. And actually what you're going to find at the moment is, there's no fights for him in the middleweight division because all the champions are going to be under zone. So that's why, no disrespect to Willie Monroe, but he fought Billy Joe Saunders, Billy Joe hardly won around. That's a poor fight. And, and where is the middleweight opposition to fight Charlo? How can he win a belt unless he's over here? So we're offering him two or three times as much money as on. Plus all the champions are on the zone. What are you waiting for other than people feeding you with stuff that makes you think differently? So basically you're saying that they have to beat the star to be a star and the stars are at the zone so they can't really I just grow think that if you want to be a champion, you want to fight the champions who are on the zone. So I don't mean to be arrogant 
and say, you've got to join the design, otherwise you're going to be frozen out. But obviously, if you're not with them, it's exactly the same. It's like, if I've got a welterweight at home, it's going to be very hard for me to give them a shot at the world title, because the welterweights are on showtime. That's, and the same with us with the middle one. And that's kind of what's happening with Crawford yeah. versus same. Spence. Everyone talks about it, but it's not. Yeah. Unless, it's gonna unless that fight is a pay-per-view that does over a million buyers, which at the moment is miles away from yeah. that, it will never happen. What would your prediction be for that number-wise? Spence against Crawford. On yeah. pay-per-view, you think they're not marketable enough? Huh? They're not, uh, no, they're I, think, not marketable? I just don't. I, I mean, I can't believe the lack of awareness of fighters like that in America, mm. like from the general public. The only way you create big pay per views is to capture the casual fan. That's why Mayweather and McGregor they do massive numbers because the man down the street knows who both of them are. If you walk out in the street in New York and ask people who are Errol's fighting, and I joke about it with Deontay Wilder, but, and it's not a criticism, they are brilliant, brilliant fighters. But it's just not the mass awareness of these athletes to create seven digit pay per view numbers. So when you decide how much to you know, buy a fighter, pay a fighter, does it go more by skill or by popularity? Both really, I mean numbers are always important, but, but when you're offering a fight up, so you know, you look at Garcia against uh, Spence, right. right? I think that does 200,000 bucks. Okay, call it 300,000 bucks. That's about nine million dollars worth of revenue to the show, right? Because time is like, let's call it 30 dollars a buy into the show. So, would we pay more than nine million dollars rights fee for that buy? Yes, absolutely, and considerably more. So, do you want to be fed a story that this fight could do 700,000 buys, or do you want the guaranteed money? Well, Canelo answered that question. Right. He took the guaranteed money. Bird in the hand, right? Exactly. So, but, but what happened is all these guys are being told, oh, you'll go and you'll go and pay for 